What did I miss? Brian here, and today we got another engine mod for the Forerunner. I'm going to be adding a Fitch fuel catalyst, and it's going to go directly onto the fuel lines. It's one of those mods where it has people thinking it's too good to be true due to its characteristics and what it does or what it supposedly does, and I completely understand why. However, I read on all the forums of every vehicle possible that has one of these installed and I saw nothing but promising results. In fact, I found out that the US military uses these in their vehicles as well as their aircrafts. So I figured why not get one of these and try it out. Now I'm not sponsored by Fitch nor is Fitch paying me to talk about this. I bought this with my own money. I decided to get one of these to try it out and see what the results are like. So without further ado, let's get to it. Heavy, huh? Yeah. It's nice. But not as heavy as my heart. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's... So here is everything that comes in the box. We got the fuel catalyst itself, the clamp, couple hoses with the quick disconnect ends, and angled fittings. Looking on the box, it looks pretty flashy, and in some cases it could look deceiving, and I can understand that. Like, this is warranted at 250,000 miles, which is a pretty long time, and it increases the fuel economy, which on the forums some people have experienced. Improves horsepower and torque. Not too sure about that. I'm not really going for horsepower anyways. This is where things get interesting. It improves the octane in the fuel and the cetane in diesel. Extends the engine's lifespan or longevity and reduces the overall engine maintenance. Now, what I've read on the forums is that with the fuel catalyst, the startups are more instant. Revs and idling is a lot smoother. It makes sense because when the fuel leaves the factory and it's transported on the trucks out to the gas stations, that fuel is no longer fresh. So what this catalyst does is it re-refines it and it's got these little metal pellets inside this canister. Now there are two types of fuel catalysts. One, they are the bare metal pellets that you drop into the gas tanks. That's more for older vehicles and motorcycles and then these inline ones where you bolt it onto the fuel lines or connect it to the fuel lines. In this case, this one connects to the fuel lines, so no cutting is needed. However, we may need to cut the hoses that it came with because these ones are a little too long. Now the way to put this fuel catalyst together is to take the angled fittings. You take the flat end of the angled fitting and connect it to the catalyst itself. Then you take the tapered end and connect it to the hose and if you look inside the hose you could see it's caved in what's up henry nice bike by the way thank you you're welcome Got everything bolted together. As you can see, these hoses are really long. Bruh. <laughs> one thing to keep in mind is, well, for one, the damage it took in the packaging. But honestly, I'm not tripping. But it shows the fuel flow. All right, we got it bolted onto the side. Looks very clean. This is where the hose need to get trimmed because you could see they're very long and the catch can is in the way but right there that is where I'm going to disconnect the fuel lines Catch can is moved, and like I said, this is the fuel line we're going to be uh, messing with. Fuel will spill out as it's getting disconnected, so this is where a pair of gloves, as well as some eye protection, is needed. It's 
start off, pull this clip out that holds the fuel lines together. Set it off to the side. Move this hose off to the side because this is where we have to pull it apart. Wow, that's actually not a lot. Oh, yeah, that's, that's quite a, a bit. bit. Yeah, not a lot, just a small bit. This is where we're gonna have to measure everything out. I have to break those hose clamps off. All right, marked where the hoses need to be cut. Now all that's left to do is to cut them, break off the hose clamps, and then move these quick disconnectors to the new cut areas. So without further ado, let's get on to the rest of this installation. Okay, we just got the fuel catalyst installed. Got all the hoses cut, trimmed, had to work around this catch can, but we got it. Again, thank you, Christian. For sure, man. And thank you, Adam. Let's hear how this sounds. To start off, you need to make sure that we have fuel pressure. Now, I'm gonna start it up and check to make sure we don't have any fuel leaks. And if there aren't any, we should be good to go. Okay, I'm struggling slightly. And it's revving high right now. It's fine, no, it's cold. And it looks like we don't have any fuel leaks. So, we're all set, we're good to go. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit longer. And looking on the dashboard, I do have the uh, low tire pressure light, flashing seatbelt light, and the door opening light. But, there's no check engine lights, so far. Yep, it's true. Waited a few months and now I release an update video and I have a valid reason why. Around December, January, somewhere around there was whenever I installed this Fitch fuel catalyst and at the time that was when COVID wasn't really spread out across the US. Things weren't as bad but as time went by things got worse and worse and that messed up everything and it messed up my chances on testing out this thing. Because of COVID, it put a stop on a lot of things. In fact, almost everything. A lot of people could not leave their homes depending on which state and which county they lived in. Others started working from home and you know, others got furloughed and laid off from their jobs. So it created a big mess. And really only the essential workers were on the road, going to their jobs, helping everybody to make sure everyone's okay and well, and you know, risking their lives. And I do thank the essential workers for doing what they do. However, for all the non-essential workers like myself, we weren't allowed to leave and, you know, I had to stay at home. I couldn't really do anything, couldn't go anywhere. And I remember Houston PD was cracking down on people going out, uh, going to other places that they shouldn't be going to. So not only was it a risk for my health, but it was also a risk running into law enforcement. And those were the chances I was not going to take. Not too long ago, Texas reopened its doors. A lot of businesses and companies reopened, and so that had a lot of people on the road again. Recently, I took a road trip up to Nacogdoches, Texas to test out this Fitch fuel catalyst, and I have to say, 
There were some things I expected and other things that I definitely did not expect. I still have the box right here and it lists out a lot of things that could come from this fuel catalyst and the main thing I was going for was fuel economy. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the cetane part where it says improve cetane because that is for diesel engines and this is a gasser and I'm going to eliminate improved octane because that mainly applies to cars that require 93 octane gas. This runs on 87 and it was designed to run on 87, so the improved octane characteristic is not going to matter. If my engine was required to run 93 octane gas, then yes, the improved octane characteristic would matter. That would mean that I could fill up the tank with 87 octane gas and then the gas would go through the hose, go through the fuel catalyst, and it comes out as either 91 or 93. I know there's a video on YouTube where someone with a Silverado also had a supercharger on it and they decided to add a Fitch fuel catalyst. With the supercharger, they were required to run 91 or 93 octane gas. And when they added the Fitch fuel catalyst, they were able to run 87 octane gas with no problem. And so that leaves with improved horsepower and torque and increased fuel economy. Now I wasn't going for horsepower because well, Forerunners aren't meant to go fast. As for the torque, I gained some low end torque and I was surprised to find that out because whenever I installed my Gibson catback exhaust, I lost some low end torque and that's because there's a lot less back pressure. And when I needed the truck to get up and go, it would feel pretty sluggish and it would feel kind of slow. After installing this fuel catalyst, magically that low end torque came back. Not sure how, I'm still trying to process how that works, but that is one thing I got out of this fuel catalyst. Before the installation, I did an MPG test going from Houston to Huntsville, and I was actually going back and forth because at the time, I was still in school. I racked up 293.4 miles, and I still had a little under a quarter tank of gas left over. After that, I filled up the tank and... That was how much gas I had to fill up. After that, I did the math and I ended up getting 20.07 miles per gallon. Now that sounds pretty good considering most people get 15, 16, or even 18 miles per gallon. But to me, that still seemed pretty low and I knew that I could pull it up even higher. After the installation, I went on a road trip and then went back home and I racked up a total of 343.1 miles and the tank was pretty close to empty. After that, and that's how much gas I had to fill up. A little more than the first time, but hey, I did drive more. I did the math and I ended up getting 21.16 miles per gallon. Now that's a 1.09 mpg increase and I was kind of surprised because I was expecting more of half a mile being pessimistic. But I'm surprised that I gained a whole mpg. So just a quick overview on how this works. So there is the fuel line and it goes up to the fuel catalyst and the fuel goes through and then it comes out up to this fuel line and then goes to the fuel injectors. Now, according to a few FJ owners, they have just gotten one fuel catalyst and they connected it to this fuel line. However, there is a second fuel line where you could see that white clip right there. And I'm not too sure if that's a second set of fuel lines or if that's a returning fuel line, but I'm just going with what the FJ owners did. Inside the fuel catalyst, there are metals where the fuel goes through and whenever the fuel comes in contact with it, the fuel reacts to it in a good way, supposedly, making the fuel a lot more efficient and reduce emissions. From my understanding, when you get gas at a gas station, the gas coming out of those gas pumps is not really fresh like it would be coming from the factory. And so basically this fuel catalyst makes the fuel fresh again whenever the fuel goes through it. I'm not sure how this works, but it's definitely working in my favor. And I gained one MPG, and that may not seem much right now, but that does go a long way. 
If you've seen my catch can relocation video, first of all, thanks for even watching it. And second, you would know that the catch can was originally on the firewall and then I moved it towards the wheel well to create some room for the new mod, which was this fuel catalyst. This looks way better and you know, the catch can looks like it's floating except it's not, but it looks better here than it did on the firewall. Now, is it worth it? Uh, to me it is, but to some others it may not be worth it, but you know, it's really up to you to decide if you want to get this or not. And so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you're subscribed, thanks. If you're not, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Take care everyone. I'll catch you on the flip side and most importantly, stay safe out there.